What's going on? Brian Tong here, and you know what? I'm gonna do something a little different because there were just so many questions that a lot of you had after my initial M1 13 inch MacBook Pro review that, you know, I thought, why not do a follow up that answers your specific questions and then shows off new things that we didn't talk about and maybe some surprises for you because this M1 here, this thing is still incredible. Apple sent it to me for review and this one came with eight gigs of RAM. So that configuration was really able to show me what this thing was capable of. And if you haven't already, go watch my full review. It has all the big stuff you need to know. But during it, I did say that I couldn't cover everything unless you want like a 30 minute plus review. And actually I know some of you do, but really a majority of the stuff I'm talking about here isn't in the main review. So let's just call this the follow-up review and jump right in, all right? So first up, Joshua Rose says, you should start the time comparison from the moment you hit the power button to turn on the computer. Okay, Joshua, let's do it. I have the M1 13 inch MacBook Pro and the previous generation Intel MacBook Pro 13 inch. Let's just fire them up. The Intel Pro starts with the lead, but is it gonna keep it? Okay, hold on. The M1 is gaining on it. The M1 just passed it up and we've got an M1 login screen at about 17 seconds. And then the Intel MacBook Pro shows up at around 23 seconds. Now, as for my 16 inch MacBook Pro with its 2.4 gigahertz, eight core Intel Core i9, 64 gigs of RAM, which I used for all the comparisons in my full review. This has a busted display, so I'm not gonna show it off, but it took one minute and four seconds on startup before the login screen appeared. So guess what? Advantage M1. Okay, let's do this now also, just because some of you asked for a shutdown, all apps have already been closed first. We're gonna hit shutdown and the M1 is instant, basically one second and the Intel 13 inch and also my 16 inch was around six to seven seconds. So faster startup and shutdown, which is expected. Again, think of this like an iPhone processor in a Mac because that's what it is and then some. Okay, then I also thought to myself, I wonder if this handles airdrop faster on an M1. So I have a collection of 36 video files that take up a combined 1.9 gigs of space. And I first sent it from an iPhone 12 Pro to the Intel MacBook Pro 16 inch. It took one minute and six seconds to send those files over. But from the iPhone 12 Pro to the M1 13 inch MacBook Pro, those same files took 52 seconds. And you probably won't notice this when you're sending over just a few photos, but with bigger file sizes, the M1 MacBook Pro is clearly faster over AirDrop as well. Now, there's more M1 comparisons, but first, let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Rhino Shield, the one-stop solution to get everything you need for the new iPhone and Apple products. Now, check out some of their cases like this Mod NX. That's an impact frame that can be left on its own or paired with different backplates for you to customize like their NASA Cosmos collection. I got this one right here. It's pretty slick looking. They also have their solid suitcase that you can design with your own photos or names, quotes, or text on it. Now, the Mod NX case can get these custom designs as well. If you go to Rhino Shield's website and use their own tool, you can select your case and design-wise, I can go with photos I like, even directly from my own Instagram feed. You can add some flair by adding a bumper color or even customizing the buttons to make it your own. You can also combine their phone cases with their 3D impact screen protector. This is made of a polymeric material that is shatterproof and flexible look. Like, it's super bendable and it's pretty flexible. Like, I can pretty much make a roll out of it compared to other glass protectors that are more rigid. It can also handle over three times the impact energy compared to a phone with no protection on it, which is a good thing. And if you're putting it through tests like this or just using it over time, of course, the protector can get scratched or damaged, but that's what it's supposed to do while protecting your actual phone. Now, Rhino Shield has a lifetime replacement program for all of their cases and screen protectors, and will send you a free replacement if you have any issues. It's their Black Friday now, so get up to 60% off store-wide. You can get accessories for not only Apple products, but for Android devices as well. So check out Rhino Shield's cases and 3D impact screen protector. They offer worldwide shipping. The links are in the description below. And if you're watching this, use my exclusive code right here to get 10% off in addition to their Black Friday sale that ends on December 1st. Okay, let's get back to our M1 follow-up review because I also wanted to show you a couple more real-world performance tests using apps. Now here's an app called Pixelmator Pro, and I'm using this because it has a feature that is using machine learning to increase the resolution of photos while keeping them sharp and detailed. So if you look at this photo, we're looking at 100%, and I'm gonna zoom into it where you can start seeing the pixelation of the owner's hand and the dog's face at 800%. We're gonna go to image and then ML super resolution, and you'll see the app work its magic. On my fully loaded 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro, it took over five seconds to do this. Now on the M1 13 inch MacBook Pro, it took just over three seconds. And now we have a sharper, higher resolution photo. I know it's just a few seconds, but 
It still makes a difference and it's almost twice as fast on the M1. And machine learning tasks are gonna be really a big deal for content creation, specifically with things like analyzing videos, voice recognition, and image processing tasks like this. Even Adobe, they recently introduced their new neural filters in Photoshop that will eventually enable you to change someone's expression in a photo, their facial age, which is ridiculous and also perfect for the IG crowd, or even position their head and gaze differently from a photo that's already been taken. That is just crazy stuff. We've never seen this before, and a lot of this is happening with machine learning and more processing power. Now, in my full review, I talked about how impressive Adobe Premiere worked by rendering a video on the M1 with Rosetta 2 translation, and it rendered out faster than my 16-inch MacBook Pro, which had an 8-minute and 16-second render, while the M1 had just over 6 minutes, more than a 2-minute difference. Now, in the comments, Lucky Starstrike 4 said, I'd love to see it run After Effects. So, here's the results. Thanks to my buddy for providing me the assets, but rendering out a 6-second After Effects animation with no apps running in the background, its own font, and a third-party plugin. I did this three times. The 16-inch MacBook Pro was able to complete the render in 19, 12, and 13 seconds. And that's pretty good. So then, hey, after installing After Effects on the M1 MacBook Pro, putting in the font and the same third-party plugin, running the same render three times in translation with Rosetta 2, the M1 was able to render out the animation in two minutes and 42 seconds, two minutes and 43 seconds, and two minutes and 45 seconds. So this is clearly one of the examples where a high level app like After Effects does significantly better on Intel based machines versus the M1. And you know, I'm actually kind of glad we got this result because you're gonna get mixed results with some apps that aren't native for the M1. And this proves that even within the creative cloud. So let's just not assume that everything is going to work even better, but a lot of it is. So all you creative professionals that spend thousands of dollars can kind of take a deep breath and know that your machine is still okay, at least for After Effects. Now, Adobe says a universal version of Lightroom will be available next month, and then Photoshop is expected to be ready in early 2021 with the rest of the Creative Cloud suite to follow, but with no announced timeframe. All right, I had a few questions about the M1 showing off iOS and iPad OS apps. I didn't do that in the review, so here's some things that you should know about. Yes, iOS and iPad apps do work on the M1, but not all work the same. So first of all, you can go to the App Store and click on your account profile and you'll see an option to choose iPhone and iPad apps. That's where you can download some of them. Not all of them will be available here though and not all of them are updated for the M1 and Mac OS Big Sur. Another caveat to be aware of is take a look at the HBO Max app here. You'd think this would be an app that you can make full screen so you can watch the content inside of it full screen on your computer, but you can't. No matter what I do, it doesn't work. Among Us, this popular game is Again, the same thing, you can't make it full screen, which is a bummer, but I've been told it's actually up to the developer to update their app to make it expand for the entire screen with macOS Big Sur and the M1. An app like Graphite, this is a truly full screen iPad OS app on an M1 Mac, and then DJ Pro AI can also be expanded to take up the entire screen. And earlier I said not all apps are compatible yet, so it's gonna take time for developers to make the proper updates if they decide to. And yes, I could go to the web versions of HBO Max and others, but I just like to launch an app if it's available. Now, here's a couple other questions from Chandra Kanta. Can you boot camp to Windows with the new M1 Max and do they support external GPUs? So unfortunately, the answer for both of these questions is a no. We know through Bootcamp you can run Windows on Intel-based Macs, but not on M1 Macs yet. But Craig Federighi recently said that in an interview, it's up to Microsoft. Like the core technologies are there to do that, and they can run their ARM version of Windows that supports x86 applications. And that's currently on the Surface Pro X right now. But Federighi has said that's a decision Microsoft has to make to bring to license that technology for users, but it can be done and the Macs are capable of doing it. Now, as for external GPUs, there's still a chance that they can work in the future as well. They have been shown to at least be detected, but they aren't usable by the OS. And it's more likely that there aren't drivers that are compatible yet. So this could change in the future. It could, we don't know for sure, but for now, it's also a no. And then since we're on a similar topic, Kyle Tomp asks, can you use two external monitors with an M1 Mac? And the answer to that is still no. It will only support a single display at up to 6K and 60 Hertz. So we'll see if this changes for future M1 machines, but not on this first batch. And again, these are kind of like the entry level to the M1 chip on Apple's platform. Now, Mariano Calzada asks, can you virtualize Windows with Parallels or VMware? And the answer is that it's coming, 
but stay tuned because Parallels, they even showed off a new version compatible with Apple Silicon at WWDC 2020 and said it's made tremendous progress by switching Parallels to a universal binary and then optimizing this virtualization code. Now VMware, they've also announced it's working on an Apple Silicon compatible version of its software, but no other details have been given. So there have been no timelines given. Uh, we'll probably be waiting for a while for them to test out their apps on the new hardware. So for this, be patient. We expect virtualization to come to the M1 Max eventually, but not anytime soon. And then one more comment, because look, I really do read them all. X Sanctum says, David Beckham from 2004 called, he wants his haircut back. You know, I actually had to look this up, but um, thanks for the heads up, I guess. Now the M1, this is an impressive machine. This is again, Apple's entry level, kind of the start, to this all new platform and first go around with the M1. You just don't realize like how impressive this thing is until you're using it on the daily, the power, sheesh, how quiet it is with little to no fan going off on the 13 inch. And then the battery life on this thing is just amazing too. And I said in my main review and all that just still holds true. Like this is a damn good Apple. And I don't think I've said that about any product from them. You know, it's an exciting time for the Mac. And like I said, it's just getting started. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up and hit that notification bell ding to get my latest videos when they drop. Also, you can check out my Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with these stories, new stories, special guests, and more every week. And thanks so much for watching, everybody. Take care and be safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace and love.